Woody Harrelson's dad was a hitman? You heard that right, and it's true. What's even more unbelievable is one of the very famous persons he claimed to have helped kill. It'll rewrite the history books if true, but more on that in just a minute. Woody Harrelson's dad, Charles Harrelson, was born in Lovelady, Texas in 1938. He briefly served in the U.S. Navy in the 1950s, but after he returned to civilian duty, he chose to go into a life of crime. His first run-in with the law was a charge for robbery in 1959 in Los Angeles, where he was working as an encyclopedia salesman, and it seems to have only gotten worse from there. Charles left his wife and children in 1968, which means Woody would have never really known his dad. And by that time, Charles claims he had already been involved in dozens of murder-for-hire plots as a criminal involved with the mob. It turns out 1968 was a big year for Charles. He was also arrested three times, but in 1973, he was convicted of killing a grain dealer named Sam DeGalia Jr. for $2,000. That got him sentenced to 15 years in prison, although he somehow managed to get out in just five for good behavior. Unfortunately, that time spent in the slammer did not convince Charles to go straight. It was only a matter of months before he took a contract to kill a United States federal judge. But first, we need a little background. Jimmy Chagra was a carpet salesman, a professional gambler, and oh, also a drug trafficker. Now, Jimmy went and got himself arrested on drug charges, and as the story goes, it was during a pre-trial hearing when he was listening to the judge that he realized he was in for a world of hurt. The judge's name was John Wood Jr., and he had earned the nickname Maximum John because of his propensity for dropping the hammer on criminals when it came time for sentencing. Chagra's defense attorney was his very own brother, Joe. And according to Joe's testimony later, it was at this pretrial hearing while Maximum John was busy denying a series of motions from the defense that Jimmy Chagra turned to his brother and said he was never going to get a fair trial from this guy and thought he should have Judge Wood killed. Jimmy met Charles Harrelson on a trip to Las Vegas and, how does this even come up in conversation? Charles informed Jimmy that he was a hitman for hire. So, the plan was made to kill Judge Wood, and Jimmy Chagra's wife delivered 250 grand to Charles' stepdaughter, Teresa Starr, as payment. Charles carried out the kill by shooting Judge Wood in the back with a rifle in May of 1979 as he was getting into his car to go to work. It was the very day that Jimmy Chagra was scheduled to go before the judge. And it was also the first time in United States history that a sitting federal judge had been murdered. Now the FBI called it the crime of the century and wasted no time looking for the killer. Of course, it didn't take investigators long to look at the judge's docket and learn that Jimmy was scheduled to appear before the judge that day. And then they started teasing out leads until Charles Harrelson became a highly wanted suspect. But finding the hitman turned out to be a lot tougher. The chase became one of the longest manhunts in U.S. history, taking over three years to find Harrison. But the FBI finally did find and arrest him, but only after Harrison managed a six-hour standoff during which, fueled by cocaine, he made some pretty crazy statements before finally surrendering. That includes threats to commit suicide and even that he previously had played a role in the assassination of none other than President John Kennedy. Of course, that wasn't the first time he had claimed that. Harrelson, it seems, had been boasting of playing a part in the United States' most notorious assassination to help him get jobs. You said you'd killed President Kennedy. At the same time I said I had killed the judge, I said I had killed Kennedy. For the record, Charles Harrelson later said he was only claiming to have helped kill JFK during the standoff as part of some weird plan to help him get out of the situation alive. Remember, we already said he was high on cocaine, right? And no real experts believe he had anything to do with that killing. After a two-month trial and 18 hours of deliberation by the jury, Charles Harrelson was declared guilty of murdering Judge Wood, among other crimes. 
and that got him a whopping two life sentences in federal prison. But that, unfortunately, was also the time that young Woody Harrelson, who was only like seven years old at the time, first learned who his father was. Woody had no idea of his father and his criminal past until he happened to hear a news broadcast on the radio reporting on Charles's murder trial, which was quite an event in Texas. Woody went to his mother and learned that the notorious Charles Harrison that was on trial was, in fact, his biological father. From that point on, Woody followed the progress of the trial until Charles was finally sentenced. Surprisingly, even though Woody had been estranged from his father for most of his life and had just learned that he was a murderer, it didn't make him want to sever ties with the man. Instead, he began looking to build a sort of relationship with Charles. But it was more about someone he wanted to understand better and help than it was a typical father-son relationship. In 1988, Woody talked to People Magazine about the strange relationship. I don't feel he was much of a father, he said. He took no valid part in my upbringing. But my father is one of the most articulate, well-read, charming people I've ever known. Still, I'm just now gauging whether he merits my loyalty or friendship. I look at him as someone who could be a friend more than someone who was a father. Woody would visit his father at least once a year and, interestingly, even developed the opinion that he was wrongly in prison. Here's Woody's own words on the situation in an interview with Barbara Walters. Well, he is in prison right now for uh, the killing of a federal judge. Um, I think that it was not a fair uh, trial, especially because the guy who supposedly hired my father to commit the murder was uh, later acquitted went on a retrial. One of Woody's earliest roles was his famous stint as bartender Woody Boyd on the smash hit comedy Cheers. Because of that role, he had the resources and says he spent approximately $2 million in legal fees trying to get his father a new trial. Incredibly, despite Charles Harrison admitting he shot Judge Wood, Woody said he believes his father was innocent. I'm not saying my father's a saint, but I think he's innocent of that, yeah. Are you trying to have the case opened up, trying to have it investigated, trying to set him free? Well, uh, let's put it this way, I haven't given up hope. Mm -hmm. But Woody's efforts to gain his father's freedom turned out to be all in vain. After an escape attempt in 1995, Charles Harrelson was transferred to a supermax prison in Florence, Colorado, known as ADX Florence. Charles spent the rest of his life in ADX Florence, dying in his cell of a heart attack on March 15, 2007. 